It's been a little over three months since Apple released the 2016 MacBook Pro. With it came hype, controversy, blind hate, and blind love. But what do an owner of these machines think about them? After three months of rigorous use, this machine is in pretty much pristine condition. The only issue with it is this tiny mark that I got somehow and, well, the dust that's hard to clean out. But that's just nitpicking. The USB Type-C ports that I thought would annoy the living hell out of me ended up being not that big of an issue. I rarely found myself in situations where I needed more ports or I didn't have my dongle, but it was pretty annoying having to carry it around everywhere. You could always buy a second dongle. <laughs> I'm poor. The display is fantastic as ever. It's really nice to video edit on and you can see every detail pretty clearly. Sometimes it does get too bright. With this Quad HD display, you can really enjoy some nice HD Porsches. They're nice cars. Yeah. The keyboard is, well, it's a keyboard. It may feel awkward at first, but over time you get used to it, and now I kind of prefer it over other mushy laptop keyboards. I really only complain about the keyboard is when you type on it, it can get decently loud. But it's not enough to annoy someone if you're typing away in a library. The speakers? Oh. My. George Takei. Fantastic. Best in class as far as I've seen. Out of all the laptops I've personally owned, this one definitely has the best speakers. By far. The trackpad is a bit big. And what I mean by that is my giant gaming mouse fits inside the trackpad. Can a trackpad be too big? Nope, let's make it even bigger. Apple, I want you to make the next trackpad the size of a small watermelon. Make it happen. The webcam is pretty mediocre. For a device that excels on so many hardware aspects, it makes such an average webcam seem pretty disappointing. Performance-wise, the processor does quite well. It zips through day-to-day -day tasks, and the Intel Iris 540 graphics chip on the processor plays light games or older games perfectly fine, such as The Sims 4, Overwatch, Skyrim, stuff like that. Out of those games that I tried, the only one that really revved up the machine and started heating it was Overwatch. But that's because it's a hot game. <laughs> For video editing, it does quite well. Every video since my original MacBook Pro video was edited on this machine. You would think this machine would struggle with video editing and heat up faster than Texas in a winter month. So on my end, the machine has given me roughly 9-ish hours even with the whole battery fiasco. But if you're going for that 13 inch touch bar model, well that one has a beefier processor, a touch bar, and a smaller battery so expect a little less battery. As I said in my previous video, the MSRP of this machine is a little too pricey. But considering on the week of release there were already sales on this machine, and there's sales going on now, I think it's a good buy. And for those of you saying, those are Intel's old Skylake processors, now Intel's all the new crappy lake processors, calm yourself. Apple only uses processors for their MacBook Pro line with Intel Iris graphics. And so far for Cabby Lake, they don't have those yet. So yes, these are the latest ships available. Anyways, I hope this video was useful for you guys, and if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, don't forget to comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.